to get now back uh, to that Parkland shooting and the deputy who did nothing to stop it. Joining us now is White House Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gitley. Uh, sir, if, if a sheriff's deputy wouldn't act, this is obviously going to give a lot of folks, uh, you know, pause, uh, give them pause with respect to perhaps giving untrained or certainly not sheriff's deputy like teachers, arming teachers. Again, people are going to say, if you have someone who was, who was trained for this, but when the moment came, probably hesitated, what makes us think that we're going to be safer with teachers who are armed as well? Look, thanks for having me, Charles. I'll, I'll just say there was a systematic failure here at every level. Obviously at the FBI, which Director Ray uh, admitted to. Uh, obviously at the local level, uh, with so many police officers going to this sick individual's house multiple times and not doing anything about it. And then also now, as we find out, the deputy didn't go into the school when he had the proper training and the proper weaponry to take out uh, the shooter before so many deaths occurred. It, it's just a failure at every level, and the American people are angry and outraged, and they should be. Now it's time to move on to solutions to how we stop this. Listen, legislation can't just feel good. Legislation has to do good. And one of the things the president talked about in that meeting with grieving parents, grieving children, uh, students, and other concerned citizens around the area, or how do we actually get something accomplished that protects our children and makes our schools safe? For so long, Washington has talked about this but done nothing to actually protect right. our children. Right. That's why the president's listening to this. He's not offering solutions yet. He's listening to everybody and people in that room, uh, Charles. Half of them said they wanted armed uh, teachers. Half of them said they didn't. This issue is clearly uh, divided across the country, but we've got to get together and come up with solutions. Yeah, I mean, and what you described is a the series of mistakes and, and finance, we call that a black swan event, a series of unlikely mistakes that compound one another, in this case, leading to the ultimate tragedy. Uh, one more for you, Hogan. Uh, President Trump, of course, will address CPAC in the next hour. Uh, he's going to announce a, a massive new sanctions against North Korea. Can you tell us more about him? Obviously, I can't get ahead of the president, but he will look toward the end of the speech. He's going to be talking about possibly extending the maximum pressure campaign that we've already discussed multiple times. Uh, the president knows that's important and a vital national security, not just to this country, but to our allies and partners around the world. The denuclearization of the North uh, Korean Peninsula is, uh, is, is paramount. And I, I will say one more thing, just back to the school as, as, as we started with. Donald Trump is more than the president of the United States. He's also a father and a grandfather. And what he wants is what everybody in this country wants, protection and safety for their children. He's going to address that from the stage today. And he's also going to talk about the historic tax cuts that your viewers care most about. More money in their pockets, something that said, something that uh, detractors said couldn't be done. They mocked the president when he, when he talked about 3% GDP growth and that 1.9% under Barack Obama was the quote unquote new norm. It is not. This country is thriving again. Businesses are coming back. People are being employed. Wages are increasing for the first time in nine years. This is a, a, a true success story the president will be talking about. There's absolutely no doubt about that one. Real quick, though, uh, the potential battle between President Trump and, and the NRA. Uh, you know, it, it looks like obviously one of the issues is the increasing age uh, of would be buyers, at least on a federal level, uh, and, and other potential gun control solutions that come from the White House. Can you tell us more about that, please? Listen, the president wants to have all the relevant stakeholders in place. Obviously, I, I mentioned he spoke to the parents and to the kids of, of the Parkland School, but also to local law enforcement. What, what resources can we implement to help them? Uh, he's going to meet with attorneys generals and governors across uh, the country to talk about what they can do at the local level and how we can partner with them to better protect our children. But uh, th this issue is not going to go away. Uh, the president supports the NRA. The NRA supports his uh, the Second Amendment, so does this president, and uh, we're going to work together to get something accomplished. Uh, obviously, the president doesn't agree with the NRA on everything, but uh, it's a rarity in politics or anywhere in this country where, where you agree with somebody 100 percent of the time. But the NRA protects the Second Amendment, and so does this president. Logan Gidley, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.